today and we're going to kiki why I cook you guys wanted to see the seed moss right so we're going to do it it's going to be very interesting because i don't know if i can do this live <laughs> but i'm going to try so peace to everyone <laughs> oh my god she gave birth oh wow i knew something was up okay well hopefully the baby's well she gave birth last night she's very early right that's very interesting anyway so we're gonna Kiki and cook and we can discuss anything so <laughs> oh oh I heard Jill Scott was doing um some interesting um some interesting um you know I don't know some imitation of something rather and you know what's interesting I think she's being judged you know a little differently than men because I've gone to concerts and men are gyrating and touching their genitalia all the time so I don't know why she's being judged maybe she was having a moment <laughs> I didn't quite see it so I, I don't really say I think I saw clips so anyway so let's start okay now I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get a better view because I'm not sitting I'm not sitting here comfortably so let me get comfortable and then we'll start cooking okay I'm trying to not be as busty. Listen, for anyone who has a problem with busty babs, I'm a busty babs, and this just is what it is. So hopefully you can deal with having a real woman on the screen without giving me tons of emails talking about I'm a perv for just being. <laughs> so we're gonna start off um, cooking. So you know today we're gonna make. You wanted the sea. You wanted the. Um, you wanted the sea moss, right? So I'm gonna make a classic um, drink that. Um, oh, I want, I want to read about the, um, and we could talk about anything. Hold on. I want to read about the um, Jill Scott. Hey, Cap, clap, ba clap back. Jill Scott, amazing music is not going to jump. Listen, family. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because Jill Scott is an amazing, she is an amazing artist. And what's interesting is that she doesn't do anything. She didn't do anything different than Nicki Minaj. Well, Nicki Minaj is totally different. She doesn't do anything different than the males who go to R&B concerts, touching, gyrating themselves, you know, doing all kinds of things like that. We don't get on them for emulating sex. Like, we get excited. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, it just doesn't make sense, you know, why people would be upset. I just think she's an entertainer. She did something a little interesting, and I don't know that the crowd even minded what she did. So um, that's all I have to say about that. I, I, I really don't want to judge her like that because I've gone to concerts where men do it all the time. So... <laughs> if they can do it, she can do it. I, I, I didn't really quite see everything, but, you know, she's you know, she's a woman of a certain age. I mean, she's an adult. Okay, so family, we're going to make sea moss. I've never done this. I usually do this privately with my family and friends, 
So I promise I do this for you. So right now you're going to see that I have my sea moss and I'm going to actually, hold on. Okay. Hey everyone. So I have my sea moss here, family. This is what sea moss is, okay? We're gonna make a really tropical drink. This is one of my favorites. I make it um, for the babies. The babies can drink this as well. So, you know, I think um, this is a drink for everyone. This is good for elders. It has a lot of nutrition. Um, this is something in the West Indies, many of us drink, we've always drank this. So this is a wonderful creamy drink. It's the holidays coming up. So this is something that you would really enjoy. So you can get this anywhere, Irish Sea Moss. Um, I think they generally sell it at most Whole Foods stores. If you can get it from a West Indian store, it's fine. Um, you want to make sure that it's raw. And um, this is a picture of a package of sea moss. That's what it looks like. Okay, you can get four ounces. If you're in the West Indies, you can usually get it anywhere. So this is generally what it looks like. And I soaked it for two days. Because I'm on raw, I'm going to, try, I'm going to make it the way that I know you would. And the little ones would but normally i do it raw so i'm going to do it as raw as possible because i'm on a raw i'm going to be raw for a couple weeks so rather than do it all um a little different way i'll just show you how to do it raw and i'll add only a tiny bit of heat now the only difference now is that when you're raw <coughs> i'm gonna wash my hands only difference is when you're raw you do it, I heat up a little bit of this outside. So I would put it out by the pool in the heat in the sun and let it sit there all day so that it softens and gets more gel, gel, uh, gel, gelatinous-like, okay? So, but for all good intents, I'm doing it on the screen, so I'm gonna do it the way I know you guys can do it, okay? So this is our sea moss. I soaked it, um, oh, my sleeve's back, sorry. <laughs> it's not very practical to cook when you have these attached sleeves, right? Um, and I had, obviously, I was playing Sparrow. So this, I have it. I soaked it uh, for two days. I like to soak it a little longer. Like I said, I'm more raw. I cleaned it already. It gets a little sooty. It's a little, obviously, it's sea moss. It can be a little gritty. Um, this is really nice texture. I love theirs, um, their quality that they have. And the soot would be in here. So you kind of throw that away. You don't want to use that. Now, this is my sea moss in this pot, this here. So this is how it looks. What does it do? Sea moss is high in tons of minerals and resources. Um, for a healthy vegetarian or vegan to sustain themselves, they need a lot of minerals um, in order to be able to properly um, function and actually get all everything that you need to every part, part of the body part. Now, it's great for your thyroid, um, maintaining your thyroid. It's phenomenal. It has, um, I can break down, I don't have the breakdown of everything. I, this, it's one of the most power packed drinks and again, we've drank this in the West Indies for, I think, from, from the longest time. It's one of the popular drinks on all the islands. Um, the, this is the Jamaican version of it with my little Creole additive to it, okay? So I always use glass. I filter my own water. So this is what I'm going to put in the water. I'm going to add it to my sea moss. My sea moss is already cleaned. I soaked it for two days. You can soak it overnight. Um, if you're not scared, <laughs> some people get scary because it's sea moss and it looks like, you know, it looks a little different for some who have never eaten sea, you know, have never utilized it before. You can, you know, you can cook it as, you can make it as you want, but again, this is somewhat raw, but I'm going to heat it up for the, for the process of showing you how to do it with a little bit of heat. Normally what I do is I leave this outside with my water. I'm going to add this much water. It's roughly about a cup of water. And this is, I don't measure anything, so this is where it's going to get real troubling, family. <laughs> I cook so many times and I make so many things, I don't really cook, I don't really measure anything. So I'm going to add my water to this. I use glass for everything because anything from the sea, I, I try not to use anything with um, too much metal. Even though the pot that I have, I left my glass pot at my mother's house. So <laughs> I don't want to get my glass pot from my mom's house. So I actually... Um, I, I actually am going to use my big steel pot, which I don't really use as often. And again, for any mommies or daddies who have autistic children or ch children that have H uh, A H D H D, I think that is the um, I think that's the diagnosis. Sorry, I'm sitting on this um, chair. Um, if they do, I would suggest you use a, a clay pot. You know, like a what do you guys call them? Um, what's the word for it? Uh, 
it's not a clay pot. It's a it's a clay pot or a glass pot. Just try not to use metals for children that are hypersensitive to chemicalization. Okay, but if you're fine with a steel pot, that's by all means you should do so. So my sea moss is clean. Okay, it's pretty clean. All right. So I'm gonna pour my water on. Okay, this is roughly about a cup of water. All right. Ceramic. Thank you, T. Thank you, T. That's exactly what I want to say. Ceramic, okay? So I'm going to soak this now. I have it here. It's clean. There's no soot on it. It's clean. It's sea moss, all right? So generally for the, the West Indian version, this um, <laughs> Mount Vernon in the house. What up, Sunger? Uh, hunger knowledge. <laughs> um, this is um, uh, uh, East Glass. East Glass, I guess that's how it's pronounced. This is something that I will be adding to it. Um, generally for the recipe that I'm making, I'm making this much sea moss. This is how big I'm making. Again, I'm bad with this. You're just going to have to follow me on this. I'll probably give you the exact quantity after I'm done. Um, I don't measure anything because I've made it for so long. So you'll see generally the quantity. I'll give you generalization of how I made it. I always put it in this. This is a, how much sea moss um, my drink I'm going to make. So this is each glass. This is something you get. Normally you do six of these, but because I'm doing triple the amount of a regular um, serving, I put about um, about less than an ounce of East glass. Okay? You're gonna need that. Um, you're going to need. Um, what is this? Arabic gum. So Arabic gum is something that, um, it is a type of sap, hardened sap. Most people ask what this is. Is this hardened sap? This is Arabic gum. This is what you also use. It's a very ha hard, sappy. Um, this is something, East Glass is spelled like this. Let me give you the actual spelling. Can you see that? This is East Glass. And this is the Arabic gum. Okay. I just get the basic version of the stuff from the West Indian places. Florbun generally calls people either sunstars. <laughs> I know. If you're coming to my channel for the first time, I know most people, most of our family don't usually come for this. I promise I do this recipe. I call you sunstars. So for our males, I call you sunstars because that's you shine like the sun and you're a star um, as the sun. And I call my sea stars because they're a sea of stars in the sky or they can be a star of seeds in the, um, the ocean. It's a very loving, endearing term. I mean, only the most, you know, it comes from a positive place. All right, so family, I have Arabic gum, okay? So normally for servings, now mind you, I'm making this much, okay? This is tough. Wait, 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 this is much. Listen, don't laugh at me, family. I'm not giving you measurements. This is a real West Indian woman. I'm a real island woman. We don't measure, so I'm giving you generalizations. I will give you measurements afterwards. But it gives you a general way of how to create it. Okay, so I'll do this. Okay, and rather than show you myself, let me take the camera off of me <laughs> so I can actually show you. Okay. So I have the Arabic gum. Um, normally you do three pieces if you're doing only two cups, but I do about six pieces of Arabic gum, and it's almost like a, a caramelized type of sap, okay? East Gliss. Okay, it's this. Oops, I'm dropping it. Okay. Now, linseed is the recipe it calls for linseed. Okay, this is linseed or flaxseed. Now, linseed, you can use linseed or, which I love to use, but this time I'm going to use linseed because I'm making this for my in-laws. So flaxseed is fine. The golden flaxseed is okay, but I like the linseed for the quality for the in-laws, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the view. I thought, it's <laughs> so hard for me to. <laughs> I'm trying to make the view. This is when, this is when you need someone to, you to film everything so it comes out perfect. Okay, so. Two liters, yes, this is roughly, Two, this is two liters, okay? This 
this is the milk. Normally, if you do coconut milk, I'm not doing coconut milk. I'm doing flaxseed milk as my um, addition for my liquid version. So some people like to use condensed milk, like the very classic Western names like to use, um, they, they love to use like condensed milk, which is very sweet milk. Um, you can make your own coconut milk, which I suggest. Um, I have a very, I have an issue with the coconuts here. So I'm not gonna use coconut milk. So I'm going to actually use um, this. The filtered water I use is for my own company. It's a triple tier filter that I've had for years. That's the filter that I use for my water, okay? Um, hold on. So what I'm gonna do while we kiki, we're gonna kiki a little bit, and I also have vanilla extract. Now, my own vanilla, I make myself. <laughs> so my vanilla's in here. I take the vanilla sticks. The vanilla sticks are very, very expensive. So I like to make my own vanilla. So I soak them in um, distilled water and I soak them for like three weeks and I get a beautiful vanilla extract and then I get to use the actual sticks itself. I don't throw them away. I put them in a the freezer and then I use them when I wanna make dishes. So I make my own vanilla extract when I can. Okay, this is three weeks old. Um, I made my own um, type. So you'll see me use this. And I make my own nutmeg. I grind my own nutmeg. So my nutmeg is in this. I normally, you know, I put it in this. It, but I ground it myself, this like old container. Okay, so. Is IPQ, IPUK on here? Are our Hebrew Israelites on here? I thought I saw their name somewhere. So let's talk family while we cook. This is what we do. So I'm gonna crush, I'm gonna take my, my mortar. This is a mortar that most people should have in the house. Most of you have them. I like to crush my linseed before I start cooking. So while I'm gonna start, I'm gonna take my sea moss and I'm going to heat it up a little bit. Why? Normally I told you, I don't heat it up for myself. I like to leave it outside by the pool, outside in the sun, and I'll leave it like that so it softens up on its own. I try not to heat it up before the video so that we can see the texture of it. I'm gonna warm it up right now <laughs> on the stove. Okay, so while I'm heating that, uh, do I have it? Okay, so while we're heating that up, we're gonna crush the linseed. I like to crush them up. Some people like to put everything in the pot. I'm not a fan of that. While I'm boiling my sea moss a little bit, normally I don't do this, but for the video, I want you to see the texture when I mix it in the Vitamixer. Um, I just want you to see it. So this way we can actually see the, the final finale because I'm not doing any editing this is live so we want to do it so that it comes out efficient okay what time is it I have time to spend time with you okay so let's get started let's wash my hands okay so what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm gonna use my mortar and I'm gonna crush my linseed because I want them nice and powdered up okay I want them crushed I don't like putting them in their hole so I take a little bit at a time so I can crush them nicely, okay? So you take your mortar and we can talk. So what's, so so Willow gave birth to her baby. Does anyone know, girl or boy, what the baby's what the baby was? I know she was probably going through labor because they were quiet in that camp for a long time. So I, I wonder if it's a boy or a girl, how's the baby doing? Yeah, I mortar. So this is mortaring everyone. If you've never seen this, this is old fashioned. You know, a lot of the natives, a lot of the um, Latinos families have them. Everybody has, a lot of the, your grandmothers have them. I did the old fashioned mortar. I could, put it, I could put it in the blender, but I prefer to make better texture and I find it tastes better because there's a whole lot of frequency. I always believe in frequency. Like I, before I cook this, um, because I'm serving it to a couple people, I'm gonna make a, a whole bunch so I can bring it to different people. I like to clear the frequency of the house. It's beautiful. When you mortar something, you put your own frequency in it. So, <laughs> you guys like your mom likes to use it? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, the lazy way is to put it in the processor, but I don't wanna heat it up. And again, this is, I'm trying to be as, I'm gonna drink some of this, but, um, you know, I am raw. So, for no, no for good intention purposes, I'm gonna do the better for you so that you see how it shows up. So when you mortar, it takes a while, it gets a little powdery and it takes a while, but it comes out nicely and it crushes it, okay? 
And as I get a crushed version, as I get them nicely crushed, I'll add more to it. And normally, like with my mother, she'll take the, um, while she's doing this, she'll take a little bit of, uh, my mom does a different version. Sure, it's uncomfortable. She does, my mom does it when she puts a little bit of the, um, what is it, the uh, baby on a brain. I always get like the, I always get, I always get, um, <laughs> I always forget little, uh, well, she puts a little bit of the other thing in here. <laughs> I understand why people call me goofy because I, I, I realize that I have such moments that I, I'm so like, I look like I'm lost in the sauce, but I'm really here, family. I really am. So you can see a little bit of the tea powdered up. So, I mean, it's a process, but I have enough time to talk to you and do this. Am I going to pull a Jill Scott at the po any point? No matter, behave yourself. Brethren, you hear what I'm saying? I know you want me to. <laughs> behave yourself. No, I mean, you know, Jill Scott, I think a lot of people, like I said, I didn't see the full, full, full thing. I think, might not matter, matter, it was on your screen. I mean, her, give, <laughs> her in the act of pretending like she's doing fellatio. I mean, as a New Yorker, I'm not shocked by it. And it didn't really offend me because I've seen, like I said, I've gone to Jodeci concerts back in the days. I've gone to like concerts with like the like R&B singers. They gyrate. Michael Jackson used to touch his penis and go, woohoo, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, if you're really offended by her doing that, I don't know why. I mean, I don't think she wasn't at, there wasn't a penis. I don't think she had a <laughs> mind over matter. She didn't have a. A dildo right she didn't have anything disgusting did she she didn't have that right so i'm like it's a microphone what's the big deal oh wait it's too hot too hot i don't want it that hot okay where's my hold on family So I don't want to, um, I didn't want the, uh, I don't want it too hot, so I had to add more water to it, okay? Um, what were we saying? Yeah, I mean, she had a microphone, she was being, let me show you my face, so you're not looking, I'm sorry. <laughs> this video, this video, listen, my mate saw the video, the other video, I didn't know you're seeing your view. Listen, like I said, if you're offended by busty bad women, I'm not the video you should see. I don't really, there's nothing I can do. This is how I look. And if you're okay with it, then I'm a mother. <laughs> I'm really not trying to entice you. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, so, I, I, I mean, people grow up. She, if she did that, I mean, it's a microphone. She's simulating it. She's probably singing a very sexy song. What's the big deal? I mean, I, you know, I think sometimes in America, people are so, you know, so, so into, like, these falsetto of ethics and morality, but meanwhile, they're listening to music that talks about pumping people, um, heinously, or, you know, ramming things up people's behind. I mean, you guys listen to really seedy music, but you're offended by a woman singing a sultry song while she's, you know, simulating fellatio. I, you know, it depends on how you saw her. I didn't see her as somebody who was like, you know, uh, um, I didn't see her as somebody who was a perv or like a dirty, you know, or, or, you know, like low field. Yeah, they're hypocrites. I agree. I think it's ridiculous. Let her be. If she wants to, I mean, you know, her music is beautiful. It's good vibration. She's positive. She does positive things in the world. If she wants to simulate having fellatio on stage, as long as it's not a real penis or a, or a, um, or a, um, you know, a, what's it called? Um, <laughs> someone said they love, they would love to cuddle with her. <laughs> See, this is what I'm saying. I mean, she's a she's a beautiful woman. I mean, uh, come on now. Yeah, I you know, and I think you know where people uh, kind of bring this up. I'm a busty babs, and I think a lot of times um, we get a lot of like you know, even in the beginning parts of my video. I think many of you remember when I used to do my videos years ago. I used to be self conscious because people would obsess all the time, and I I love I appreciate myself. Let let me just state that I I appreciate how I look. 
I'm okay how I look, and I like how my parents brought me into this world. But Jill Scott is very busty, and I think a lot of times people sexualize her when it's not necessary. So I think when she does something sexy, it's like over it's like overworking it. <laughs> because to them, she's already kind of sultry and sexy. And I think when she does anything like that, it brings it over the top. Like if I talk about anything a little too sexy, it, to, to, it takes everything up 10 with me. Like if my girlfriends who are less busty talk about things sexually, it's not taken the same way as if I talk about it. So I understand that people are kind of over overreacting to her because of the way she looks. She already looks very sexy. I think that's what it is. <laughs> oh, she's a Sag Moon too? Oh, she's one of my people. <laughs> yeah. Busty babes go through. I'm just saying, you know, a lot of women go and get breast, breast implants and butt implants and they don't realize that, you know, maybe because they don't grow up that way, they don't realize how sensual, well, maybe they do. Maybe that's why they're getting it done. Maybe they don't realize how much, um, uh, attention you get in ways that you don't always want you know what i mean it's not that you i'm used to i'm used to certain things but it's not warranted i'm not trying to um oh i'm making hunger knowledge i'm making um making sea moss for everyone here so we're gonna have some sea moss i'm watering some uh linseed i'm almost done really family so i mean i have this much left but i'm doing a good job so we're talking while we're cooking so <laughs> You have a Sagittarius moon, Strigo? So, yeah, we're going to make our sea moss drink. The holiday days are here. I don't know what you celebrate. Um, I celebrate every holiday. I, I saw any holiday you throw at me, I use it as an excuse to, um, to enjoy <laughs> celebration with family and friends. You give me a party, I will enjoy it. I'm, I'm a celebratory type of person. I, I don't celebrate the holidays, so you know, the religious aspects, but I love to get together with family and friends. I really do. I appreciate it. You know, and I have a partner, you know, my, my mate is from Kingston, Jamaica. Big up to my mate, Kirk. He's from Kingston, Jamaica. And I love, love, love his family. They love to party and they're so light, light loving and friendly. Like when you're over their house, we're cooking, we're laughing. It's so beautiful. I love that kind of vibration. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I, I picked another, I picked a proper mate for me this time. Because my Nazi was totally different, but um, <laughs> Triple D. What did you say, April? April, you're Triple D? That's a real Busty Babs. That's what I'm saying. The Busty Babs are in the house. All the Busty... How many Busty Babs are in the house? So you understand, my, my, my beautiful sea stars. Um, whatever she is doing, it's not working. Auction on stage. I don't know. I think... I think William says, I think sexual energy can help us all connect. I think, you know how it's interesting? We're cooking, but sex becomes a conversation. Wait, hold on. My sea moss is too hot. Okay. Um, yeah, I think sexual energy is beautiful. And I think once balanced and healthy, it is absolutely something you should utilize to co-create and, and, um, and, um, you know, utilize that beautiful fielding and energy, especially, you know, <laughs> all the busty babs are coming in. We got double D's in the house. See, you know, this is what, when it comes to my videos, are like, I don't like Fleur Brune. She's just flaunting, she's flaunting all her goodies. I'm, I'm not flaunting anything, honey. I, you listen, it could be a lot worse. <laughs> I have clothes on in this video and it's not what I normally do when I cook. Ask Kirk. <laughs> so I'm being real appropriate in this video. <laughs> I am. Okay, so I'm almost done mortaring, okay? Thickums in the house, right? Yeah. You know what's interesting? But being, um, just talking about motherhood, I find it very interesting that people sexualize the bosom. But what's also most interesting is that it's part of why men will choose a woman. One of the most um, and I study genetics and heredity. One of the notable things why people mate with very busty women is because generally in nature, they tend to be very nurturing. They tend, they've done studies. Women who are very busty tend to be very mothering, very good mother figures. Because of that, it's almost like it's a genetic quality comes with this type of form. So it was one of the main, that's why I think women will mimic it and they will go get breast implants to kind of have the facade of looking nurturing and looking motherly. 
Okay, I think that's all it is. And I think you got to be careful getting with women who I'm, I don't I don't judge women who get breast implants because I think they look beautiful. I'm being honest. I've seen I have girlfriends who've got breast implants. They look incredible. They look beautiful. But you got to be careful, gentlemen, when you're choosing a mate who's got breast implants because her behavioral pattern is not that of a woman who's naturally busty. Women who are naturally busty, like Big Mama, <laughs> the quote unquote Medea figures, those are very nurturing, motherly figures. So a woman who naturally has bustiness to her will be a very good mother by nature normally. It's just a general consensus, but when we bring it to genetics and phenotypes, it's very common. And it did studies on this. So, you know, big up to all the busty babs in the house. <laughs> <clears throat> now, I'm not saying every busty woman is a great mother. I'm saying it's a general, it's a general, it's a general, it's more likely that she will be based on the way that that genetics come it comes together okay so i'm almost done watering i keep saying that right okay so i'm doing the last of watering yes love and light thickums are, are normally warm and protective it's a mothering quality like even when my little ones like when i um most of you know i like to dance in carnival right i'm a carnival girl so if they do carnival i wanted to go to trinidad and tobago i think next year i wanted to i can't next year for reasons you'll find out but I wanted to go and dance in carnival and whenever I go to carnival I kind of slender down right um, and when I slender down my little ones because <laughs> they say mommy don't do that we like when you're fluffy listen to what they say they're like mommy please don't 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 lose any weight because we love when you're fluffy please mommy it's so cute <laughs> when they say that because they're very serious they like to snuggle with me and they like to you know get into all my nooks and crannies they call me fluffy yeah when i'm chunkier when i'm thicker they call me fluffy it's such a beautiful endearing way to say you know you know mommy it's got a <laughs> extra few <laughs> it's so sweet though so whenever i go to dance or something like that and i start slimming down down too much um <laughs> Um, when I start slimming down too much, you know, um, it's, it's, it's hard, it's hard for the little ones because they like mommy to be fluffy. <laughs> yeah, mommies are great pillows, you know. I remember, I, I was, you know, maybe I shouldn't say this publicly, I slept in my mom and dad's bed. I used to sleep between my mom and dad, well, uh, older than, let's just say older than I should have been, right? Okay, so we're cooking, we're talking, we're chatting up, we're cooking, all right? So what I'm going to do, family, so... I mortared up this. You can't really see it properly. I mortared this up. I just ground it down so it's a nice texture. I'm gonna lower the heat on my stove because I don't like heating this up. But for the sh for this, because it takes it's a process, and I didn't put my sea moss outside in the heat. I'm gonna put this inside of the pot with the sea moss. It thickens it up. So I'm gonna put it in right now, okay? And I'm also gonna put my my um my arabic gum in right now okay so i'm putting these in right now halfway through warming it up okay so i'll be right back also i'm going to put my um e-glass in there now <clears throat> i don't like using I, I use wooden spoons, and this is like, it's not dirty, but <laughs> I use it for curry. But I'm going to use this to stir it because I don't like to use um, metal spoons. I like to use anything natural. And you know what? I should show you. Okay, hold on. Let's see if I can show you. I'm sorry, I have a terrible view isn't this terrible i'm gonna try to twist this around how can i do this okay so this is my mixture here okay so that's what we have that going on right there okay okay so that we're doing while we're waiting so we're gonna let that stew a little bit. I do it very, very light. I don't, for my own, if it was just for me drinking it, I wouldn't, like I said, I would heat it up outside. So I'm doing um, this. I would, I'll, I'll be better at filming it. If Kirk was here, Kirk would film me. He's not here right now. Kirk said to wait until he comes 
to come and do it, but I can't wait for Kirk. <laughs> I'm a Sagittarius, we're impatient. I was like, Kirk, you gonna film me cooking? He was like, yeah. I was like, but I don't wanna do it late. So he's gonna come in a little while, but it's too late. <laughs> so anyway, so, um, so that's what I'm doing now. And um, I went earlier, just to say this, I went earlier because I'm making, um, I'm going to make my, I think the next recipe, I'll actually be better at this because I can do this more in film. I'm actually making the, um, my peanut butter, my peanut butter cups because I've been craving, craving peanut butter cups. And I told you I won't do chocolate. And one of my C stars, um, Sid had suggested getting this African chocolate, but for some reason I have, uh, I had one before and I didn't order more. So rather than that, I'm raw right now. So I'm going to make, um, on, you'll see it on Patreon. On Patreon, I'm going to make my peanut butter cups. And I'm not making it with peanut butter, I'm making it with walnut because I don't do peanuts. Okay, so I was craving peanuts, but I don't want to do it because it's not healthy for you all the time. So I'm going to do raw walnuts. So I'm making my own wa my own raw walnut butter, but I'll show you. Hold on. So these are my walnuts that I have here. I'm gonna put this in a food processor and I'm gonna make it myself because if you go to Whole Foods right now and you try to buy, let me tell you family, this is how sick this world is. If you try to buy raw walnut butter, it will run you $36. So if you make your own, it's easy, it's not that hard. You have a food processor, I told you I bought a new food processor. Um, so you wanna make, um, I'm gonna make my own raw um, butter it's $36. Oh, yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, go if you want to pay that, <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I don't mind paying for things, but I think it's absurd to charge people $36 for a raw walnut butter when you can make it. I This was uh, this is like walnuts. What is like $7, $8 for all these walnuts? It's going to make enough butter for me to make my um, peanut butter cups, my walnut butter cups, okay? So I'm going to make that on Patreon, and I make it with avocado, and then I make it with my walnuts. So I'm gonna make my walnut butter later, and then I'm gonna make um, my walnut butter cups, and they're so, so good. Oh, and, and it's raw. It's all raw, and it's gonna be fabulous. So I do that as my snack, because whenever I really want something, I'm jonesing for something while raw. Hold on, let me mix, hold on. Now, family, what I'm doing also, Oh, I think I ran out of my dates. <laughs> I gotta go run and get dates after this. So family, I, I thought I had all my recipe. I don't put sugar in my sea moss. Some people put the brown sugar or date sugar. I ran out of my dates. I don't use, there's date sugar that you buy. That's what I'm making for everyone else, but I put fresh dates in there. So I ran out of dates. <laughs> I think I was snacking on them last night. I forgot. When you're raw, you just could snack all day and night. So I'm kind of upset that I don't have my dates, but you can watch me make my lunch if you want while we're waiting for our sea moss. <laughs> yeah, no dates, right? I'm upset because I have my dates for the, you know, I wanted to use my dates. And I could use, you know, this is a vegan version. I don't want to put anything. Honey would make it non-vegan. I do have local honey. Um, Fleur, is your prepping video on YouTube? or Oh, it's on Patreon, Love and Light. It's on Patreon, my prepping video. When you see me... <laughs> go through my bug out bag. It's really interesting. I had fun doing that. My friends used to come over my house and then they would go through my bug out bag and <laughs> they'd look at, listen, these are girlfriends I grew up my whole life. They would go through, I would, you know, I go and dump my whole bunk, bug out bags on the floor so for, for my girlfriends to see and their husbands. You should see their faces. They're like, they get nervous. Like, is this something we should be doing? <laughs> they're like, wait a second. 
Adele, are you, because that's my name, you know, like, oh my gosh, like, they get scared, like, they feel like they're unprepared, and they are, I'm like, you should have that too, raw honey's fine, let me show you the honey, remember, I have, I, I'm raising flexitarian children, so I only buy local honey, and I only buy honey in season, so, um, usually, our fall honey is not here yet, we still have our sunny, sun, um, our sun, uh, oh, mon dieu, qu'est-ce que c'est au soleil? um a summer honey summer honey okay so let me show you the honey that i normally would use i'm not using it for this because i want to use my dates the dates taste so much better than honey and i'm doing it for vegans i don't want to add anything that's non-vegan so i have to do it that way hold on so this is the um this is the local honey that they have that comes straight out of Florida. This is our local honey. It comes right here like this. Okay. It has the all seeing eye on it. The bees it's raw and filtered. And this is the summer blend. Okay. Now for my little ones, I'll do honey with them. Um, I'll add it to cakes. It makes cakes very, um, fluffy <laughs> like mommy, <laughs> very fluffy and so on. But I only do local. Um, why do you do local with any, if you do bees or if you do, um, if you do honey, and this is only for our vegetarian sect. Veg vegetarians most likely are more balanced with knowing things like this. It's because whatever the bees, whatever's in the environment that is not healthy for us, the bees have, the plants and the bees have the intel on the environment. And they build the antibodies for everything locally that's going around in the air. That's why a lot of people do bee pollen when they're about to get sick because it, it boosts up your immune system. So the wonderful thing about... Um, you know, local bee honey is that those bees have already created antibodies and it's in their honey and their honeycomb. So I usually save the honeycombs when I go to the farmer's market. I save them and then I'll put these in teas or in uh, teas for the little ones when they're very, very sick. Okay. So it's wonderful and I only do local and in season. So this is a summer blend. They haven't had the fall blend yet. When the fall blend comes, I won't mess with the summer. I only go in season. And this is for the children because they're flexitarians. Okay? So people who don't know what flexitarians are, they're healthy, holistic. Um, they eat within season, and also they eat um, different genres. They can be flexitarian. They can be um, pescatarian sometimes. Hey, Carlos! <laughs> um, uh, they can be pescatarians, meaning they occasionally all do f certain fish for them, uh, low mercury fish. They'll occasionally eat, especially with their dad. Their dad knows that um, they can have um, certain land animals that are um, grass-fed, non-GMO, like buffalo, um, venison, um, some quail. I allow them to have that. Um, what else do they have? Uh, I'm not a fan of poultry. It is, you know, I'm, because poultry is dirty, obviously, because, you know, p people don't realize people eat a lot of chicken, but pork and chicken are the same. They have as many parasites. Chickens have as many worms as pork does. You know, if you've ever lived on a farm, you would know that they have just as many, um, you know, type of eggs and things like that. So I try to stay um, away from that as much with them. That's hard with family. So remember, what they eat with me, I, I do, I'm really aesthetically sound. When they go with family, I'm not as stringent because I want them to enjoy the company of family. I don't want them to, I want them to enjoy the vibration of food and overstand how things make them feel. I want them to be balanced. So when they choose a certain genre, when they get older, whether they're vegetarian or vegan, um, my little one's more vegan. Um, my older one tends to be more vegetarian based, um, but they are flexitarians. So I allow them to, um, you know, engage healthy and balanced. Mommy makes sure that they eat well, but otherwise, you know, when they go to family's house, I'm not a Nazi with that. I want them to eat loving food with good vibrations that their family would bring to them. So that's what I, I do. Okay, family, it's almost ready. Okay. <laughs> Cooking with floor burn. So what I'm gonna do now is Serve all meals with love. Absolutely. Honey starts a flower nectar collected by bees, gets broken down to simple sugar is stored inside the honeycombs. The honeycombs constant uh, constant uh, 
fanning of bees' wings causes evaporation, creating honey. Thank you, Rainbow. Rainbow Warrior, I love that you broke that down for everyone. It's beautiful. Yes, beautifully and eloquently stated. So, family, while we're doing that, I'm going to get ready to make some lunch because we're going to wait for that. And I don't have any dates, so I'm upset a little bit, a little bit, <laughs> like my partner would say, a little bit. I'm a little upset because I don't have my dates. And also, for everyone, you know, I'm still off coffee. I'm not drinking coffee. You won't see me drinking coffee anymore. I make my own Moringa tea, Moringa and Soursop tea. So this is my tea, and it's so yummy. And Cheryl brought this cup for me at the conference. Um, big up to Cheryl. Cheryl bought this cup. When she came to the conference, she bought me this big cup. So I can feel like I'm still um, <laughs> engaging in Starbucks. This is not Starbucks. So it's very nice. Yeah, I've been on coffee. for. Remember, I was off coffee, coffee, but I'm off decaf, decaf too. So it's working out well. So I'm going to make some raw. This is one of my favorite snacks during my raw. And my little one will eat this up crazy. This is okra. This is fresh okra. This is locally bought okra. So this is okra. I'm actually going to make this now. And you can see me have lunch while we're waking, waiting for, for, our, um, for our goodies. Okay. Okay. Um, hold on. So I'm gonna, these are already, I'm just. So what I'm doing right now, if you notice, I'm just cleaning them out. I always store my, um, my water, my triple T water, which is inside. I store my triple C water and I wash my okra, obviously, right? I love okra and again my little one will eat these all up so when she comes home she will want to eat all of this up if I leave it out for her that that's the one who's more veg vegan and that is a little one is the one when I was pregnant with her she my pregnancy was mostly vegan I don't even remember if I ate any dairy or anything I might have added it but it was rare um, and that's the little one that was born who has more vegan disposition she can eat strawberries and Raw, all the raw things that I eat, she eats raw, everything. Everything that I make raw, the raw peppers that I do in hummus. I make fresh hummus. She likes to dip her, her peppers in hummus. Hey, Carlos is in the house. I mean, um, oh, Jose, Jose. <laughs> now you want coffee, Jose? Now that you're on? <laughs> Jose. <laughs> Gotta have some sawfish and peppers with yours. Oh, El Summers, right? You're, you you like the sawfish? Yeah, the bacalao, Dominicanos call them bacalao, the Latino set calls it bacalao or sawfish, which is very common. I like ackee. Um, ackee, I, I mock ackee and sawfish. I mock that, a vegan version and a raw version. So that's what I'm saying. When I was gonna, when the book is actually done, I don't even know why I'll get it done, but I make a raw version of ackee and sawfish, which is amazing. So you would never, it's, it, it shocks people what I can do. But I'm a foodie, obviously. <laughs> I like, I like to eat. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Okay. Um, and everything I try to use is glass. As you know, I have tons of glass. And when my little ones were very little, I had a lot of broken glass in the house. It's just what it was. But I cut everything. And I use a lot of key limes. You know, we have a lot of local key limes and we grow them. My tree, my lemon tree is not quite as big. I have a key lime tree in the back. So um, if I can't, if mine are not yielded, like we picked all of them, I usually buy the local key limes. And then we have the big avocado, avocado, l'avocat. Et c'est français, l'avocat. Okay. All right, so you're going to see what I do to make my raw. Um, I'm going to cut these. I'm on this. So it's not like a kick off a conversation. L'avocate, est-ce que tu Vous parlez français aussi? Oui. Um, I'm going to cut this. So this is what how I make a raw. Um, oh, flax crackers. Yes, Ashira. Yes. Oh my gosh, I love flax crackers. As a matter of fact, thank you for that <laughs> reminder. You know, when you do raw, you kind of forget certain things that you do. Um, so 
I'm making right now, I'm making, we're waiting for the sea moss to finish. It's warmed up. I'm waiting for everything to come together like a gumbo. And then we're going to put it in. I ran out of my dates, so I'm a little perturbed because I wanted to put my dates in there because sweeten it up because I don't like put sweeteners after. I do have maple, fresh raw maple. I could add maple, which is fine, but I like the taste of dates. You know when you like something? I don't like to really put something I normally don't do. But I could, for all good intention purposes, if you want to quickly have your, your that's glass that I'm cutting on. Um, yeah, I use, maple's fine, you know, um, and also you can dry out your sugars. You can make your own maple sugar. I had a maple tree, so on my farm before, I would make my own maple and I would make maple sugar. You know, I, I had a, about three and a half acres. I had a third of an acre of raspberries. Some of you have seen it on Facebook. Um, I was a, I'm, a, I'm a farmer <laughs> by nature. So um, I, grew, I grew about, when I was living at my other home, because it was a farm, um, I grew about 70% of the food that we ate, 70 to 80%, depending on the season, and it was great. And anything else I would buy otherwise. But, so now you're seeing the okra. So if you want to see the texture, the, cut, the cuts that I'm making of the okra, this is how I'm cutting the okra. I'm cutting it like this, okay? All right? You're also failing at French school. You're failing at French school? Pourquoi? <laughs> Etudie You should be able to say your numbers in French, right? On deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, dix, onze, douze, treize. Right? You should at least count, right? And French is very easy. If you know how to count and say combien, <laughs> Combien is how much? You if you if you know how to say combien, <laughs> pourquoi? <laughs> like why? <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you curse words. You you could get far. <laughs> you know, the French could be ever unforgiving though. We, our culture is you know francophonic people love their culture. They love themselves. Soursop juice? No, I'm not making soursop. I have soursop tea, um, and moringa tea. Do you want to see the fresh moringa that came from outside? <laughs> So I bought, there's a farmer, I can't grow Moringa for some reason, it doesn't grow wild with me, but I have fresh Moringa that I actually got from my local market right here. I do fresh leaves and I do soursop. You know, the combination is an anti carcinogen it's wonderful, it has flavonoids, it's great for your immune system, um, it's great for everything. Flurburn, you're not helping with the, with the fast I'm doing, maybe I should, wait, what's it? Oh, I'm not, well, no, I'm raw, oh, I'm sorry, love. I'm raw, so I'm kind of fasting, sort of, kind of, sort of. I'm still eating. I'm sorry. This is, this is maybe not the day you should watch. If you're fasting, like doing a raw, like a fast, like juice fast, this might, might not be the video, because I'm making, I'm about to make a shake that will make you look, like, like this shake will make you, like, fall in love. Like, sea stars, if you are mating with a beautiful wonderful male and you want to make something masterful for him now you can make this uh it's an elixir actually it's considered to be an aphrodisiac so you know for some masterful sexual energy making this is wonderful it's sultry you add a little bit of nutmeg on top you serve it with him some men like it with rum you know the west indian men like it with rum though so i don't do the rum kirk Kirk, I will say, is a true West Indian Jamaican. He likes white rum. So he likes to add a little bit of rum to his sea moss. So with the sea moss, I'm sure he'll add a little bit of white rum. So, you know, I don't, I don't mind when he does that. That's what he likes to add it to. He drinks it straight as well. But, you know, this is a nice elixir to make for your lover. Somebody you're, you're, you're you know, you would like to, it's a loving, it's a loving drink. It, it would express your affections for them. <laughs> it's a sexy drink too. Like if you put it in a beautiful cup, you get a really, really a beautiful um, goblet mm. and you put little shavings on the side. You can add a little coconut shavings on the side of it. And then you add a little bit of the nutmeg on top. My gosh, oh, it's heaven. Okay, so let me check my sea moss. Hold on. Okay. So let me show you. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm not close. So look at, can you see? This is how it looks. It's a nice texture. Let me show you when I mix it. Okay.
Okay, so I'm letting it cool now. It's perfect. So it's perfect texture now. I'm gonna let it cool a little bit, and then we're gonna put it in the blender with our flaxseed milk. Okay, we're gonna do it with the flaxseed. It's really, it looks beautiful, it looks nice creamy, right? I'm not going to add my vanilla that I made. I made this vanilla myself. I don't like to add it until it cools. Why? It's because I love to add this when it's cooler so it doesn't change the texture or biochemically change vanilla. Vanilla is one of the very um, sensitive, um, fl flavorful type of, uh, what's, I don't you know, it's like a flavor. You don't ever want to put something when it's hot, vanilla in something when it's hot. It changes the taste of the vanilla. It'll alter it. Because I've made this and it took, uh, I think, three weeks making this vanilla, I want to make sure that you can taste it. So I'm going to do it when it cools off a little bit. I'm going to put it in and then you'll see us put it in a blender. Like I said, it's a good drink. I'm going to make some, um, some okra salad right now. So we're going to eat together and this will be our really sexy drink. This is a really nice uh really nice like indoor meal like a indoor snack and kind of like if you're raw or you're a vegan this is a really nice um delicious drink and um meal like this okra right here it could be a meal i eat it as like a lunch it's gonna be my lunch so you're gonna see the okra so i'm almost done hold on so what's going on family <laughs> someone gonna kick off the topic you might as well kick off the topic why I cook because we can talk about anything. And the wonderful thing about cooking and making all these wonderful things, chia seed pudding is very nice. Ashira, you, you have um, some vegan raw ways. I like you. You come over the house, we can sit here and make... Listen, I had, um, back in the days when I was dating, no, I was, I was married already. I had uh, my husband. So sports figures used to come to our house. And some of the, I was one used to come over and he was a vegan. No, was he a vegan or a vegetarian? He was a vegan. He would only listen to me, family. If they didn't have a chef, he would only come to my house during like football season because he knew that I was the only one who would make the best like vegan vegetarian stuff from scratch. So he knows that I would juice before he came over. This is my girlfriend's husband. Big up to Junior. Junior's really cool. Junior, they were big into sports. Like during football season, uh, you know, they come over and they knew, the men knew, and the women also knew, like if their husbands came to my house, they already knew they'd be taken care of. They'd be eating well. <laughs> they'd be behaving themselves because, you know, I don't let ratchery at my house. Um, it was really nice. So I remember Junior would come over and I would make him like a fresh, um, I'd make him really um, a fresh salad. But I would make fresh, um, I make sure I make hummus from scratch for him because he loved my hummus. So I would buy, and a lot of the, um, a lot of the herbs like parsley, I'd have fresh parsley from my garden, um, fresh cilantro. Uh, cilantro. Um, also I make, um, his favorite thing that he loved that I made was the um, pineapple salsa or mango salsa. I make a mean salsa. Matter of fact, I feel like making salsa now, but I, I'm already going to eat this. Okay, so I'm going to do this. I'm not going to make all of them because I know my little one will eat this. Okay, so this is my, right now, you're going to see this. This is how, look how beautiful this is, right? Okay. I'm going to cut one. I want two more, so I'm going to cut two more. Chickpea soup. The soup is nice as well, right? Okay. So we're just right now for those who are just checking in we're letting our um we're letting our sea moss cool off like i said i don't normally like to warm it up on the stove but because um only because i'm on this and i'm making it for others i'm going to do it like i would for if i made it for other people i can make meals for others and i can make it totally for myself what is your home country oh martinique is okay so martinique is the country that all the families from but st lucia is where they're living now remember i don't know if many know about the volcano eruption in martinique in the 19 i think it was 1920s the my last name is mon plaisir so the mon plaisirs used to reside in martinique now we have a lot of family in panama as well in the outskirts of brazil okay we do have family in south america and central america but for the most part the pot is in martinique after the eruption of the um volcano a lot of my family members died so um, you're basically Haitians. <laughs> you 
great. That's what they say. Most people here think I'm Haitian, and I love our Haitian people, our Haitian people. So I say, no, I'm Martinican. So most of the people, mark, they migrated over the Montpellier's migrated to St. Lucia. That's where you get my last name. We own a lot of the property in St. Lucia. Most people know the Montplaisirs because we came over from Martinique and we did well in St. Lucia. So when you hear me say, when I always hold up the St. Lucian flag, it's because it's, I'm Martinica based. My mother's family is all from Martinique and Guadeloupe. And my father is from St. Lucia, but it is from the sect of the St. Lucians that's actually from Martinique. So for all intention purposes, I'm, I'm a Creole. And I am Martinican and St. Lucian, okay? And the Panamanians hate when I don't say it, but Panamanians too. So our language, our native language is French, and half the family speaks Spanish. So French and Spanish and obviously English, right? <laughs> My grandmother speaks the most languages in our country, though. So she's 101, and she was working at the library in Yonkers, and she just retired at 100 years old. And she was the oldest person in our country who speaks the most languages. I, to this, I think she's in record. So, yeah. <laughs> she's cool. And Granny's got her, her mind together. You know, she's still, her facility, her mind is still bright. You know, when I want advice, I go to Grandma. Um, she's, she's still there, you know what I mean? You know, some people have grandparents, you know, sometimes their minds aren't there, but she's, you know, I get my advice from her. You know, you want to hear some wisdom? You want to, I remember Kirk's mother. I brought Kirk's mother to meet my grandmother. She was in shock. Because, you know, I'll tell you this all day, and you may not think it's true. Like, I tell people my grandmother's 101, and she just retired at 100. People think I'm joking. They don't really take me seriously until they meet my grandmother. Then they're like, oh, wow, Kirk's mother was like, I've never seen it. She's amazing. Oh, my gosh. If I could, She said if she could only live and be like my grandmother. My grandma's foxy. She's cool. She's smart. She's savvy. She's everything. And her personality, who, who I'm more like, I'm, I'm less like my mother personality-wise, I'm more like my grandmother. So I hold her general personality. Yeah. Okay, so the so Irish moss is almost done. We're making right now this. So I'm going to show you how simple this is. Hold on. Where is my... I just took it out. You know when you just take things out and you just don't know where it is? What was that? Oh, here we go. Okay. This I'm going to add. For anyone who doesn't... This is my favorite. I think this is a gem. This is like my secret... This is like my secret um, seasoning. I love black... Um, salt mm. and it makes everything so flavorful so I'm gonna add this to my um, my little raw mix here okay so this is this <coughs> okay now this I um, I told you I do zero soy so I had to research over and over again to find a Worcestershire sauce that was not with soy, that was without soy. Now this is the only one that they have at Whole Foods and it's the only one I can verify. This is soy free, it's got none of the bad ingredients, all spice, all the good things. You can only get this at Whole Foods, uh, I can make it, but you can only get this at Whole Foods. It's wonderful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on, wash my hands, Always wash your hands, okay? So, oh, my alarm's going off already? So this is called Island Palm, and this is Black Lava Sea Salt, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit of the, a little bit of this and pour it on. My key lime, just a splash, a key lime. Okay. 
a little bit of this, um, which is the black lava sea salt. This is really good for you. It's a cleanser and clearer. A lot of uh, witches use this to, this is like, um, this is um, banishing salt. So a lot of witches know to do the opposite, you use like a black salt. But for knowing that it'll get rid of the demons out of you. Look how pretty, it looks so pretty when you do it though too. Look at that. Let me show you how pretty that looks. And then I'm going to mix it with my hand because I am a Creole and we do everything with our hands. Call me Jill Scott. <laughs> Where's my other matter? Call me Jill Scott. She's mixing with her hand. She's in luring men. You know, that's the kind of nonsense people say. Look at this. Look at how beautiful that is. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh, that's God. That's my lunch. <laughs> you saw how simple that was? This is all I'm putting in here. So this is what I'm gonna have. Is one of my this is like my raw um no I didn't add oh I added um linseed to my um other thing, but this is so good. Hey Matreya! So this is a, so yummy. This is a good snack for your little ones. Um, hmm. My little one loves this. She was so eat this. Mm. This will make like the Christians, you know, the pastor is like, you know, young Pharaoh's on this thing when he's doing all these things. This will make like the pastor like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> mm. Mm -mm. And look how healthy you can be. We have a raw okra salad. We're making Irish sea moss, which I'm about to finish up. Mm. I got my soursop moringa tea. You wonder why people want to come over my house for parties? <laughs> mm -mm. I'm sorry. Here, you want one? Yeah. That's for you guys. And a key lime gives it that taste. Okay, family. Enough of this. Let's clean up the space. Because it's time for the main event. Remember, this is a sea salt. So good. Okay. Always clean up your spaces. Okay, family. Now the main event. Doo -doo -doo, we're going to do our Irish our Irish moss. Okay, so I can't put the sweetener in. This is the only part that you won't get to see. If you're going to do a sugar, um, I say you do date sugar. It's very good. I'm gonna add a little maple because I wanna be able to drink a little bit, a little bit, but I do fresh dates, okay? So I bring my dates apart. I have my Vitamix, so it breaks it down nicely. So you're gonna get to see all this, okay? We'll put our lunch aside. If you guys are coming over for lunch, I'll, I'll make some more. We're gonna use our flax milk instead. Some coconut milk is fine. Condensed milk, you know, the the Caribbean people like to use condensed milk, which is like a carnation milk. Um, I'm gonna add my cinnamon in a minute when I do my milk. I gotta put my honey away. We have to make sure that we clean our kitchen. We want to make sure we have a nice, clean kitchen. Okay. okay. I'm going to have to do this standing up because... This way you get to see. Okay. 
this is what you know when you need like a camera person to do all this I'm gonna show you my vitamin I'm gonna show you my Vitamix this is my Vitamix okay this is ooh, look at this. this is my Vitamix this is what we're gonna use to make it in okay. I'm gonna pour it I'm gonna get an angle let me move my I'm gonna move all my stuff so you can actually see it okay. I have my almond I'm gonna make almond butter uh, almond butter to make my peanut butter my almond no not almond my walnut butter later to make my almond peanut butter cups almond butter cups i mean my walnut butter cups <laughs> i keep making a mistake hold on i'm just trying to clean everything up and also for anyone who asked me about um bladder rack this is the bladder rack that i use now um bladder rack is good for your thyroid for maintaining a healthy thyroid um it's wonderful this is the tincture that i use I take a little bit a little bit every day so for those who have um, you know just want to maintain their thyroid you don't have to have a thyroid problem because I I'm clean and clear of that but you want to make sure that you're maintaining a healthy thyroid that helps it's wonderful you need a, a healthy amount of iodine you use the same comp company K it's beautiful I love that. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this so this is going to be what we do I'm gonna try to let me try to get you at a good angle. Oh, yes, I got it. Okay. This is my vanilla. This is our pot here with the Irish moss. Look at that. Look how beautiful it is. Look how creamy. Look at that texture. Look at that. That's Irish moss. Look at that. Look at that beauty. Beautiful. Now look at that beautiful texture. This is the Irish moss. So for anyone who thinks that this is like, isn't this crazy? If you know, a lot of people see and they're like, how do you make a shake with this? This is how beautiful a texture it turns out. Okay, so it's getting cooler a little bit, but I'm going to put this on. Now look how much the quantity I have here. I'm going to do this. So I'm going to put it on here. I want to cool it off a little more with my flat smoke. I'm not good with measurements. I don't measure anything. So I know by the way that something looks if the texture is proper. Okay, so it's going to thicken up even more when it cools off. So I have to make sure I do this fairly quickly. So you can see generally how much. Now. Ta-da! We're gonna put our amazing, amazing vanilla. This makes such a difference. I do my own, um, oh, what is it called? Nutmeg. So, you know, I grind my own nutmeg and I put it back in old containers. I recycle. So I'm gonna put, oh, smell that. Oh, it smells divine. I'm gonna put the nutmeg in there. Nutmeg. You can never put too much nutmeg, but I'm gonna do it. Oh, that smells amazing. Okay. Now, some people like to put cinnamon in. I don't. I like to put cinnamon after because I'm not a big cinnamon fan inside. You can add cinnamon to it, which some people do. I love nutmeg. I really, really do. So I'll do more nutmeg than anything else. So let's mix it up.
Oh, oh, this is heaven. Let me show you firsthand. Now, depending on the texture that you like, some people don't like the seeded version. So that's why I grind it up. But I, you see how it has a nice, like, nutty kind of look to it. It looks very pretty when you do it. I'm going to mix it up a little more and make it a little more solidified a little more. I don't like to do it too much because I want to keep its quality. Remember, this is sea moss, family. This has a lot of minerals and um, vitamins and everything that the body requires. It's power packed. So if mommy is, if any of mommies or somebody has cancer, this is an elixir you want to bring with them to the hospital. Okay, this is something you want to bring to the hospice, and they would love this, and it's good for them. It's better than any those shakes and cans and things like this. You can make this for the babies. If you have a baby that she's not eating very much or he's not eating very much, you can have this and give it to the babies as a shake. It's a healthy shake for them. It tastes really good, and you can add different sweeteners. So I'm gonna finish up, and you'll see the final product. I say I always use glass. This glass container container is my favorite container. I actually, this is a duplicate. I haven't used this one. I usually use my other one. So I'll take the, the tag off. This is kind of tacky to leave the tag on. Isn't it? I'm going to use the tag. Anyway. <laughs> take the tag off. You never want to have tags on anything, right? Okay, look at this. Okay, so we're going to take it now. Now, I don't have the sweetener in family. Remember, you want to put either date sugar, which I'm going to go get my dates after this, and I'm going to remix it, but I want to show you the texture it looks like in here. I want you to actually see the beauty that it comes into, okay? So, and then I'm going to show you how you serve it to your partner. Your partner is going to love it. He's going to be like, or she's going to be like, oh my gosh. It's, and also, it works as an aphrodisiac. So for someone who's having a little bit of trouble getting into that mood, this would help. It's a sexy drink. Then we're going to take some wonderful cinnamon. No, I don't want fresh cinnamon. I have another cinnamon. We're going to take our cinnamon. And one of the things that makes me very Creole, Creoles, we like to add a little bitter to everything sweet. So we take a little bit of lime, put it on top, and there's your drink. Look how beautiful this is. I love it. And I'll show you from the top aerial view. This is our beautiful...
okay with the video. <laughs> Kirk is gonna be like, you know, he'll be like, Kirk will be like, how come you didn't just wait for me? I'll be like, well, you know, I wanted to make it. So anyway, everyone, I hope that you enjoyed me making this. I'm gonna um, actually put the actual recipe. I'll get it together and I'll just type it so you at least have quantities. I make this so much so that I don't measure anything. I know by how it looks what to add. Um, this is a phenomenal power pack drink. If you're doing the raw version, which I'll probably do again with the raw, all you do is you don't heat it up. You leave it out in the sun. I do it. I leave my sea moss out in the sun, you know, safely. I don't have any critters out there or anything. I put it outside and I let it coagulate a little bit, get thick, and then I put it inside the blender. But this is a wonderful, wonderful elixir, especially for the elderly, for people who are sick or healthy. It doesn't matter, but it's really power packed and you can't go wrong with sea moss. Now, for the West Indians and those who like to get a little of the wine and spirits, you add about a, I think about this much, Kirk, Kirk, Mickle John, <laughs> my Mickle John, um, Kirk would probably add about a shot of vodka. So for this container, you want to add about, if you're going to add rum, white, you always add white rum to this. So for those who are doing it with an elixir, um, um, you want to add, a, I think, two of these, you know, more progressive West Indians, I add three. So you add two of these of distilled white rum and that's a very that's a holiday drink that a lot of the west indians drink um at the holiday so kirk will probably add a little bit a little bit of rum to this so this is considered to be um the irish sea moss it's really really yummy please do a recipe recipe yeah i'll add the ingredients after the fact you know i'll do it after the fact it takes me a little bit and this way you'll have the exact uh, you have, he's a true jamaican man oh you have a maid he's jamaican man yeah they this is a wonderful recipe. It's very easy. It wasn't that difficult. We kind of chatted along when we were cooking. So it didn't take us that long. Yeah, rum. <laughs> Someone said rum, rum, rum. But yeah, a lot of the gentlemen like rum. And like I said, it's an Afro DJ act too. So for the gentlemen who want, you know, for those who like to, you know, a little, add a little sauce <laughs> to it, you have this. And, you know, we did my snack earlier, which I showed you. We did the wonderful raw okra so this is a very west if you want to know island people this is generally an island thing so i we have a little raw okra so this is lunch and that's our elixir <laughs> so i hope you enjoyed it um next time when you make it make sure you put the sweetener in um i'm gonna do the sweetener after the fact it'll still be delicious and what make sure you refrigerate it It'll get even thicker like a shake. Make sure you cover it. If it gets too thick, you can always add more milk. Sometimes it gets very solidified because I put a lot of uh, Arabic gum. You can add more flax milk and it'll bring it more up. And that will allow for you to make even more quantity. Okay, because this is, this is going to get even thicker. You can even see it now coagulating. It's going to get very thick. The thicker it is, the more milk you can add. And you can make this for holiday parties. You can make it for children's birthday parties, anything. So, all right, family, we had fun, <laughs> blessings, I love it, enjoy your day, I think I'm doing my show tonight, <laughs> absolute, oh, see the black salt, I tell everyone to get the black salt, this, this is, oh, it makes your salads pop. You want your salad to pop? Get this black volcanic um, black lava salt. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So I'm raw, weak. Soon it'll be three weeks. I'm going to be raw for, you're welcome, Carlos. I'll probably be raw for, I don't know. I'll be raw as long as I want. But I'm definitely going to have some of that. Um, this evening when I put it in the fridge and my little ones are going to, so I'm going to pour them in party cups. This is how I bring, this is how I bring my cups. So I bring my cups like this. This is how I deliver my sea moss. <laughs> I don't have spoons and stuff in there, terrible. but I'm going to deliver my sea moss to everybody who wants some. And I'm gonna end up having to make more because they're gonna they're gonna drink up all my sea moss. I already know it. So anyway, family, 
I'm going to go. Thank you for joining me on this broadcast. This was a lot of fun. Join me for cooking. I'll make some other raw meals. <laughs> I got to finish eating. Because my little one, if she sees this okra, she's going to tear it all up. <laughs> Um, if I have any other questions, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I consider myself to be a raw connoisseur because I can mock everything. I stopped mocking years ago, but I don't really have to mock foods anymore because I've been so out of the, the genre of eating mainstream foods. But I can mock anything because I'm, you know, I've done it previously for so many years. So... If you want to check out my other recipe, like I said, I'm going to make my raw walnut butter, peanut butter cups. They're not peanut butter cups, walnut cup, <laughs> butter, walnut butter cups with chocolate and walnuts, and it's raw. And that's going to be my snack for tonight, mm. Mm -mm. if I make it in time. So I'm going to soak my nuts. In <laughs> it's not dirty. Don't call me Jill Scott. I'm going to soak my nuts. <laughs> my walnuts <laughs> so I get a good effect once I soak my nuts then I'm gonna make my raw butter and I see that um, on I'll have Kirk take that for me you'll see that on patreon and you'll see my raw uh, uh, walnut butter cups and I do walnut because it's a better show it's a better um, it's a better quality nut for you your nuts are salty but sweet. <laughs> We'll get in trouble. Listen, if I start talking like this, you know how they get on me. Fleur Brun is just enticing all the men. She's doing it purposefully. I'm like, oh. no, I'm okay. I have a mate. I'm not shopping for any others. <laughs> oh, true empress. I mock sawfish and acne. You'd be shocked. If you were on my Facebook, you already saw it already. But I'm going to put it on Patreon. First, why? It's because that's going to be part of the book. I got to be careful because uh, that's that's totally something I, I just I created it. I kept doing different and different things until I could finally get the perfect texture. And once I got it, it was like the bomb.com. But it took me a while because I wanted the texture of, of um, sawfish. I wanted the texture of it. It's very hard to mock. So it took me a while and then I eventually got it. And what I did is I just did a taster test of the whole neighborhood. <laughs> so I made it. And people were like, oh my gosh. And they loved it. And once my, um, once my family and, you know, island people really like it, then I, get a, then I get a thumbs up. I have to make sure they authenticate it. That they're not just trying to be nice, that they really enjoyed it. And they ate it all up. Cooking book will come. When Fleur Bone settles down long enough to finish it, I started it already. I just haven't finished it. I just, I'm all over the place. So anyway, family, I'm going to go, I'm going to go put this in the fridge. See, it's thickening up already, family. Try the recipe. I'll do it later. I'll put the actual recipe and the ingredients inside. Make this for a loved one. Make it for yourself. Make it all about a sexy day with a very sexy drink. It's phenomenal. Okay? And... Stop judging Jill Scott for doing what men do all the time on stage. You know, if you can go to a Kiss concert where a man bites off a bat's head and then you're going to criticize Jill Scott, come on now. <laughs> Cut it out. She's a sexy woman. She wanted to give fellatio to her mic. It wasn't somebody else's mic. At least it was her own mic, right? If it was your husband's mic, then you would be concerned. She's doing it to her own mic. So stop judging her for things that men do. We, we need to be a little more... Um, my, just balance, you know, stop g giving women so much strife for the things that others do so many times more, more crass, you know, she's a beautiful woman. If that's what she's doing and people loved it at the concert, I'm sure people at the concert didn't, didn't, um, complain about it. So why should you? Okay. And if you, um, if you're a church goer and Jesus going, you shouldn't have even watched that video. So if you all about Christian and Jesus Christ and you criticizing her, why did you watch the video? Cause you're a perv. <laughs> You wouldn't have watched the video if you're so Christianized. So why are you judging her on something you shouldn't have even seen? Why'd you even watch her? Why'd you even watch her get past a certain movement? Anyway. <laughs> anyway, family, I love you. I'm out. I'm going to go. Peace.